let's do a moon rover of some sort. And, uh, paper made flare. We're just gonna go for it. Now, this isn't. I'm. I'm just gonna do something similar to what you know. Not NASA. Not NASA. <laughs> Sound like a psycho. Um, what NASA you know might send to the moon or another planet like Mars. Something lightweight, maybe with solar panels on it. Um, and we'll do. I'll do a rough sketch and then do kind of an overlay here. So let's sketch in some sort of base for this thing. All right. Something like this, just to get my base perspective in place. And I have an idea for the solar panels. I do want them to kind of have this hexagonal shape on the top. So I'm just going to map these out like so. Like I said, I'll do, I'll do an overlay as well and just kind of mark some points. Maybe, maybe I won't do an overlay. Maybe we'll just keep it super sketchy today. Super sketchy sci-fi Sunday. How about that? All right, solar panels here. Some really cool. And like I said, I want it to be kind of lightweight. Shall I do that? Yes, I will drop down just a little bit. We'll do a, a six wheeled rover here. Kind of have these wheels offset. Maybe there's some rocks in place, you know. So one ellipse here, two, three, and then let's offset. Happy Sunday. If you're just joining on the Instagram, I will be peeling off in just a sec to focus on the YouTube. That's at youtube.com slash sketchaday.com if you're interested and want to check that out. I'll be able to chat with you and all that good stuff. All right, another ellipse here. I'm, I'm, when I draw ellipses like this, I'm really just thinking of a central axis. Okay, something like that. And then I can project back. And, you know, maybe this is some sort of camera array on this rover. Okay, something like this. Let's put a little little hood on this camera that perhaps mimics the solar panels. All right. And we've got our wheels here on kind of this flexible suspension thing. I'm just going to hint at that. I'm not going to focus too much on all the details here. Maybe there's some pivot, you know, it kind of change the angles depending on the uh, position of these wheels. This one's a little bit higher, for example, and maybe has a horizontal rotational component that we can put in here. Like so, simple platform for this rover. I love space wheels. They're like super light and the tread patterns are pretty awesome. Um, because, you know, when you, when you think about it, Rocket fuel is probably expensive. I'm not sure how it compares to gasoline, but my guess would be it's probably a bit on the expensive side. So you, you want your spacecraft to be as light as possible, right? Let's do a little clamp thing of some sort on the side here. And maybe these solar panels can like, you know, pivot out or up um, to the front, that kind of thing. Um, depending on the position of the light. All right, guys, on Instagram, I'm going to peel out, but if you want to catch the rest of the marker demo here, hop on over to sketchaday.com slash video or youtube.com slash sketchaday.com. Peace out. All right, guys, now that we have a private moment. <laughs> Let's finish drawing. I'm, I'm really excited to uh, have you guys try these brushes out though, for real. Um, so it's gonna be a fun week, exciting week. Been working at this for such a long time. Um, and really, I just wanted to make sure everything was right. And if you have purchased brushes in the last week, don't worry, I will make it right for you guys. All right, so a couple little tread, tread things here these metal wheels. 
Just putting some curved lines in. Something like that. I'm still gonna be using my cheap markers today. I am still testing. Still testing these out, so. So far, they have been pretty good. And I love kind of being able to put them through their paces a bit. All right. So this one, we're going to kind of see a little bit of the inside. So let's create some sort of hub, hub thing happening here. Again, maybe some lightweight elements. Keep this sketchy. And then throw some tread on. James Howe, how did you find your time on Adobe Live? It was good. Um, it was different because I think I'm one of the few, if not only, industrial designers that's been on, um, to my knowledge. So part of it was kind of explaining a bit of, you know, what industrial design is and hoping that people kind of got that. I haven't had any complaints yet, so we'll see. I'll be back on next week with Adobe as well. And I've been posting the links to it, so don't worry. Um, I will send out communication about that when it's happening and all that good stuff. All right, Lynette, hopefully you approve of my moon rover here. I'm not looking at any reference either, so I'm kind of fudging some stuff. But again, just keeping it kind of lightweight. You know, maybe we have some sort of trusses here for stability, but also keeping it lightweight as well. So some sort of truss structure, although, you know, maybe that would lead to accumulation of dust. So maybe that's not such a good idea, but we'll see. We'll see if NASA picks up this idea. Just kidding. <laughs> Hope you guys are having a great Sunday. It's been a busy, jam-packed week, like I said, and I'm just grateful to kind of have a bit of time here to hang out with you guys, relax, listen to some good beats, and do some drawing. Matthew Sweatman, interesting, <laughs> interesting name there, um, wants to know what is my favorite thing to draw. Um, favorite and frequent are two different things. I often find myself drawing uh, robots, cars, shoes, quite a bit. Doesn't necessarily mean that they're my favorite, but they are kind of like that thing that you draw when you're just, you just want to do something. That's that's what it's kind of like for me. All right, I, I did review these in a video that I'll be dropping, I believe Monday or Tuesday, but these are the Ohuhu brush markers. So I just want to show that to you. Um, and we're going to do this rendering with these brush markers. So let's go ahead. There's some weird stuff about, about this set of markers though. Um, I'll, I'll talk about, or you'll see that in the video. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and pick this. Let's see. Neutral gray three, five and seven. If I can find a five, like I said, there's, there's some weird stuff. Like there is no five, um, for the neutral gray. And colors, I'm going to be using yellows and browns. That's all right, Lynette, no worries. You're solid, rock star. Thanks for being awesome. All right. Okay, just checking to see if my video is a little bit slow. I have like two computers up and I'm doing a bunch of stuff here. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, I'll do some form gen stuff, um, Abby, when perhaps I, I might do an alien instead of a robot, but um, I'll do some form generation stuff there as well. If you're just joining, this is Sketch A Day Live. I do this three times a week, Sundays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. You can catch me here on the YouTubes. I'm an industrial designer and I like to draw stuff. All 
All right, I'm gonna add some marker before I commit too much to the line weight here. But again, completely freestyle drawing, no uh, gray marker, which I typically do. And I am liking how this is turning out. Petrol head from Switzerland. What's up, dude? Or dudette, or human, or non-human. Maybe you're a robot, part of Skynet. We'll never really know. Pranjit's asking, have I done fighter jet renderings? Not renderings, but I've sketched them before, just for fun, for funsies. So these, this sketch will be, I would say, majority gray, likely. Um, I'll probably add a few color pops on it as well. Starting with this neutral gray three, anything in shadow here, I'm just gonna go ahead and shade in on the underside, leaving a couple white spots here and there. These tread patterns shade in as well. It's nice and loose. And these are, my, so these Ohuhu markers that I'll be reviewing this week, they are, I got 120 of them because they were so cheap. And I'm gonna try and just use them for like, along with the Bianyo markers I got that I reviewed, just use them as uh, kind of daily sketch markers. I should have made the underside like a color. Maybe I'll do a color pop on the underside and um, on this camera bit. Not that you really need color. I mean, if you're on another planet, unless you're running into intelligent life or something, right? Do you really need color? Do you? Yeah, I wish you had your pencils and markers as well. Um, question for you guys. I'm wondering um, for the next stream, would you like to see the chat on the video as well? I guess, no, nah, you, you wouldn't need that because you're on YouTube. So you can see what everyone's typing just fine, or you should be able to. All right, I think the solar panels, I'm gonna make those like, uh, if I can, if I can get a color that looks kind of copper, I'm gonna introduce a few warm elements here. Shade in on the inside of these wheels. And, all right, let's keep that light for now. So now we have some base tone uh, stuff here. And now let's see if I can find a color that's kind of copper. I'm gonna grab a scrap piece of paper and use that as a marker palette of sorts. Whenever I'm working with new markers, I like to kind of test them because not always is what you get on the cap going to be what comes out of the marker? So I just like to, I like to check. So that's yellow eight. And we've got, what is this one? A yellow red one. I like that one actually. We've got a yellow nine. So for example, in this marker set, there are some colors I tried out that you would think that it, the lower number on the marker would mean um, lighter, at least that's what I'm used to, but it was like completely flipped. So if you're working with markers, it's always helpful to kind of just create a quick palette. If you've picked out a few colors, that's what I'm trying to do here. I like that yellow red five. So I'm gonna set the five aside and I think it was the yellow red one as well and the yellow four so i'm going to use these to do my solar panels here Let's set my palette over here on the side so i can see it all right okay color in a bit of the outline and some of these divisions on these panels. Let's 
edge over here. The camera lens as well, the front of the lens. Kind of had an idea for something maybe a bit copper looking. Maybe it's a reflective coating on the lens of sorts. Copic does have a copper marker, but I'm trying to use the cheap markers <laughs> for the stream and the rendering today. Manpreet, are you late to the party? Not really. We're doing Sci-Fi Sunday, Super Sci-Fi Sunday with markers and pens. Lynette suggested a moon rover or a rover. So that's what we're doing first. All right. Something like that. And now, you know, you kind of want to imagine where your light is. If it's maybe directly over, this will be my brightest spot, but I'm going to shift the light ever so slightly. So I have a shadow that's cast back or forward either way, um, just a little bit. So I like, and maybe it's because I'm right-handed, but I, I typically assume the lights coming from the top and the right. Now, although this is shadowed, we're going to cheat a little bit. And now I'm just going to shade over the panels here, like so. And now leave a nice big white spot and some contrast next to that spot. Just like that. Keep it streaky. What's up, David? D -d -d -d. David with two Ds. Thank you for joining the stream, product design maker. And seriously, thanks to you guys for being here because I know Tiger King is pretty great, but sometimes you gotta, sometimes you gotta join my stream, and learn some stuff, learn yourself. All right, so a little, I'm gonna bring this kind of copper element down the side just as a color pop. I can shade over the gray for that. And I'm using a different yellow now to kind of enhance some of these streaks, divisions, and so forth in the solar panel. If you're just joining, this is Sketch a Day Live. I do this three, sometimes four times a week. I'm totally messing up on my, my lines there. But I do this three, four times a week, and I just love hanging out, so. Appreciate you joining and being here. If you are new, definitely hit that subscribe button and turn on those alerts. I will be releasing my new brushes after the stream. I'm so excited. 29 brushes. My first pack was, I think, nine or seven brushes, something like that. And now I've expanded on that and made like 30, almost 30 brushes for you guys. Actually, there were 30. One of them I didn't really like, so I got rid of it. All right. So now, like I always say, contrast is your friend, okay? So right here, I want to have some good contrast on these edges, especially on this edge that's close to the outline of the rover. I'm going to go dark here and go lighter in. And hopefully these markers blend okay. I had a little trouble testing them earlier, but fingers crossed we can get something decent here. All right, this is a neutral gray marker. Seems okay so far. I'm gonna jump to the three. Keith says, Tiger King is everything, but live sketching is so much better. Well, thank you. I just love drawing. Absolutely do. Special thanks as well <laughs> to those of you who've donated or contributed in the past. I have had requests, and so I do have links on the frame if you want to contribute. But being here is enough, and I am grateful for the support that you guys continue to give week after week. So thank you. Um, thank you for being here. All right, let's go ahead and 
work on a few of these reflections, increase the contrast. Because contrast is our friend. Just grab this edge right in there. On the front, we'll get some, some kind of artifacting things happening. Thank you, Alex. So what's the next one going to be? Should we do a robot or alien? So I can mentally just start designing it in my head. You guys let me know what you want to see. Cast a vote, pitch in. As always, check in. Let me know where you're watching from. Drop your address and social security. No, just kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> but yeah, let me know where you're checking in from. I am curious. You know, we had Jamaica, we have the UK, India, it looks like. Sometimes we get Russia, Greece as well. Always fun to kind of figure that out. Maybe I'll do a behind the scenes live camera sometime. I wonder how I could do that. I could have like a, you know, behind my back. So you guys could kind of see how hard this is to do. <laughs> to draw and like, check the chat. Robert's checking in from Scotland. Got Colombia, man, that's awesome. We have 48 viewers, it looks like, at least on my end. Thanks for joining once again. Just trying to get the solar panel looking like bomb because it's such a big part of the sketch. I want it to just pop, right? Vestiel from Turkey. That's amazing. I do like that these Uhuhu markers have a brush tip. Um, they come in at around a dollar a piece. And sometimes you can find them on eBay or Amazon, it seems. So if you're interested, you can check that out. All right, what color should the planet's environment be for this rover? I want you guys to tell me. What color should the environment be? We've got Ireland, sci-fi alien mech suit. Hmm, interesting. I guess that's combining the alien with some robotics. I like that, I like that idea. Let me start thinking on that. See where I end up. Brazil, Iran, welcome. Hope everyone's staying safe. I uh, recently decided to up my social distancing and be a lot better about it. So I'm not even seeing family right now. My sister that I live close by, I was gonna have her on the stream. She's also an artist. So I'll have her at some point here soon. Green environment, okay. We can do something green. I think we did green with that car sketch I did on Friday though. So unless someone has another idea, we'll do green, but. The reason I wanna know is I wanna take the environment color and put into the um, sketch somewhat. So let me know what you think and we'll make it happen. All right, I need a couple black lines here. Oops, forgot to cap my fine liner or my uh, flare. Sometimes they dry out and then I get upset at myself when I forget. Luckily they are cheap. I think they're like eight bucks US for a set of 12. Sometimes you can find them cheaper. Here's also a pro tip. Whenever I go to Amazon, I always try and uh, find things that are open box or returns. Because sometimes that just means whoever was buying the thing just returned it. It's not necessarily defective. So pro tip for you if you want to save some money. All right, sketch this in. And make some of these lines bold where they need to be. 
We'll also try and cast a little bit of shadow on itself as well. Pale blue sounds interesting, like a pale blue gray. Um, maybe pale blue gray and green. We can do both. Blue moss ground. Yeah, so I like the blue green theme. We'll go with that. Now, if this were a real presentation sketch, I'd probably do another. Well, I shouldn't say a real presentation sketch, but meant to be more of a final drawing. I would do more surface definition and try and figure things out a bit more. But here, I'm just going to, we'll just roll with what we have. Purple sounds interesting. And we'll just vignette the environment, so not really finishing things out. Just a hint of something in the background, maybe a little bit bolder here, reflecting into the rover. This is Sketch Day Live every Friday, Sunday, and Wednesday. Fridays, I go live at 9 a.m. Pacific. Wednesdays is my evening stream. And I'm trying to trying to figure out what the best time is, but usually around 6 Pacific is when I go live on Wednesdays. So we got a few questions here in the chat I will answer. Let's see. Do I recommend markers like Touch 5 or Budget Ones? Um, you know, historically, I was adamant about using high quality markers, but I tell you, man, the game has changed. And what I mean is I've been drawing since, at least with markers, since 2000. Two? 2003? Yeah, 2003. And uh, back then, yeah, it was really hard to find a budget marker that was good. So far, these are great. My one, not one, but a few of my misgivings or hesitations with the marker is I don't see where I can buy a refill. And I, I like refills because they're a lot more environmentally friendly option. You know, instead of having to buy tons of plastic markers, I have um, inks that I can put into the marker to replenish them, which you know is a lot kinder, kinder, gentler. I'm not trying to get political, but just you know, thinking about um, my impact a bit personally, and so I like Copics for that reason. But as far as performance goes, you can peep my videos on the reviews. Um, in fact, the review I'm going to post, I think I'm going to go a bit longer with it and more in depth in the comparison. Compare some cheap markers to the things I use frequently as well. So you'll get a sense for the differences. But again, at a dollar a piece, it's really hard for me to say recommend if you're a student, especially um, more expensive markers. Now, if you have the money for it, by all means, go for it. You won't regret it. But if you are on a budget, I think these do just fine. I'm just putting a little shadow here under the panel and on some of these components. Definitely has a short circuit, I don't know, Wally vibe almost to it. Are they safe to use? You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm giving myself cancer right now, but um, <laughs> as it stands, yes. They they don't have any toxic smell. They are alcohol-based. At least the product description says so. And they behave similarly to other alcohol-based markers that I've used. Um, reading reviews of these, I haven't seen any complaints about... Uh, health impact by using these markers. Like chart pack markers, for example, I enjoy using. Thanks again to Chad for hooking that up, Chad Sanborn. Um, he donated to the channel and allowed me to purchase those to test. But they are super toxic. Um, they have noxious smell, but they're actually juicy and nice to use. So. 
if you're going to use those, you want to definitely be in an open room, but, um, or room with good ventilation, but these seem, these seem pretty fine so far. All right. So we're getting to a point where I'm going to do the environment now. Design Berg asks, when I do a presentation sketch for a client, do I tend to go digital or manual? It really just depends on the phase of the project. So if I'm at the beginning of the project, I tend to keep it marker. If it's a little further on, then I'll do digital. And part of that is just the level of finish. And with clients, if you go too finished up front, they think the project's done, which kind of does yourself a little disservice, um, especially when it comes to billing and so forth. Thanks for joining on Sketch A Day Live. If you're watching on Facebook, it's likely a day after or a few hours after. If you want to catch the lives, definitely subscribe and turn on those alerts and you won't miss it. All right, a couple more shadows here. And then now let's do kind of our ground environment. Okay, so once again, because I am not used to these colors, we have to kind of pick and test a few things. Um, okay, so this is PB10. These names are so weird. All right, so I've got PB10. And then let's pick a purplish color, something light. Well, this is a PB1. You think they'd be related since they're both PB, but not really. So PB1. And then I want to do some some pinks. So this is a red 10, R10. I'm not even sure if it's a red 10. I'm just calling it red 10 because of the R. And R25, a little purplish. And let's see, R18. Ah, too light. Let's get some green in here or something greenish. Y7 and something brown. BR1. And I guess I could use some of these yellows that I already had. So for the ground, I kind of started sketching in, you know, maybe a few rock elements, things like that on the ground. So I'll sk sketch some of these in maybe some pebbles here and so forth. And then for the background itself, you know, maybe there's these alien structures or something in the background. We don't know where this thing is, but certainly not Earth. So we'll just kind of sketch these in. Let's keep it loose. Look at, notice how I'm holding the pen. I'm holding it very lightly, halfway up the barrel, for example. And that just allows me to have a nice, loose and light touch with the sketch. Luke, would it be possible to do a black environment with random, with a random light source? Ew. Maybe for the other sketch, I wasn't really planning on black, so I shaded this with a brighter light in mind. So that would kind of be challenging to do right now since it's so bright. Okay, I also have these green grays, which are kind of weird, and blue gray. So this environment in the back, I'm just gonna start kind of shading in a bit of these structures. We'll add some brown to kind of warm them up a little bit as well, or some other colors, we'll see. But with perspective drawing, colors that are far away are going to be less saturated. So you won't actually, and you won't see as much detail as well. So as I move to the front here, I want to lighten things up, but as well, increase the amount of detail, or not lighten things up, but rather increase the saturation. 
as I move toward the front of the drawing. Product designer maker is asking, do I keep my paper still for the viewer? Um, yes, <laughs> I have resisted rotating this page so many times today because I'm trying to make sure that you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. But um, with practice, if you, and if you draw with your shoulder, you're able to um, pretty much draw any direction. So I don't need to necessarily rotate the paper right now. Plus it's a super loose sketch. Um, I'm not too worried about being extra precise with it. You know, maybe this is a shadow being cast, so I'm just gonna block that in. I'm um, not worried about being too precise. So yes, I, I'm trying to keep it still for you guys. Plus my workspace right now, I've got markers to the right, to the left. I've got a laptop here. I've got a tripod thing, a little gorilla pod that I was using for Instagram. I can move that out of the way, I guess. I've got my phone, a can of Coke. So <laughs> I don't want to, uh, you know, necessarily mess up too much. All right, let's use this green gray as well. That was a blue gray three. Let's see, I have a green gray nine. Which is again weird and then green gray five so i'm going to use the five and again moving forward just start to introduce some just light strokes here and i've rotated the markers tip so that the chisel is now horizontal and i can kind of get these strokes that aren't broad from the marker you know, something like this. And like I said, the light, I want it to be um, lighter on this side and darker on the other side. And this thing's gonna be casting a shadow. Maybe I'll do, should I do a purple shadow? Maybe I'll do a purplish shadow. So we'll uh, we'll get a little purplish as we move forward here. All right, so green, gray five. I think I have a green, gray three, yep. Kind of work this. David D -D -D is asking if I prefer Procreate or Fresco. Um, I, there's things I like about both. Fresco has uh, these vector brushes that are pretty cool. If you ever work in a graphic way and need to, um, you know, preserve the, I'll add some white here to kind of pop this. So don't worry about that side. Um, if you want to be able to scale your artwork, it's really nice. And it doesn't have the same limitations with the number of layers that Procreate has for some reason. I'm not sure how they solved that problem, but they did. So if you've ever used Procreate on an iPad, typically, when you create a file, you'll be presented with some information that says that you can only create so many layers. Fresco does not have that. So I like that. I do use Procreate more right now because I'm more familiar with it. Creative Cloud, ah, Creative Cloud integrations, however, with Fresco are pretty nice. So if you, have things like libraries. Um, if you've ever used Capture, you can integrate and pull in colors into Fresco to create palettes and so forth. Um, so that's kind of nice. And everything's saved to the cloud. So file storage seems to be a bit more thought out. I'm always a little nervous with Procreate if I'm gonna lose like some file or something. Lynette says, I see you using chisel tips a lot. Do I ever use the bullet tips on any? No, not really, actually. I don't uh, I don't typically use the bullet tip. I'll use the brush tip, but um, not the bullet tip on markers. All right, so lighter on this side and we'll go a little bit darker here. Maybe have some purple in the sky or something here. Purple will complement nicely. And then I can put some purplish on the ground, on the wheels and so forth. Um, but just part of the sky, because I don't want to overwhelm the whole thing. So 
So let's go ahead. Now I'm going to rotate this. <laughs> Luke, what kind of drawing assignments would you get as an industrial designer going through school? Um, it was it was more uh, quantity based than quality. And it really just depended on the class that I was taking at the time. Some classes it was about, you know, coming up with certain solutions. But, you know, hey, we need you to come up with 50 sketches that show exploration on a certain topic. All right, so for the sky, like I said, I want it to be more intense on this side. And so now some of these structures will get, get that light, we'll get that on the ground, might even get a little bit on the panels here. Because markers are translucent, you will want to kind of strategize a little bit almost about how and where you place your colors. That's why whenever I have a highlight, I like to leave just a little white spot and these colors will kind of just tie everything together. Just a little hint of color on the top of the wheel there. Let's see if this pink's too intense. I might pick something else here. Let's see, P3, what is P3? Let's find out. <laughs> How do I decide which areas are black and colored solar panels, wheels? Um, when you say black, do you mean the outline or do you mean the shading on the inside? I'm curious what what you mean there. So let me know. Just another purple here to the sky. Just keeping it loose, super sketchy here. You know, markers can be intimidating because they don't forget and they don't forgive. But I love how quickly you can work with markers. It's pretty sweet. So I'm trying to kind of play off the color contrast in the back because the orange is, or yeah, the orange copper is here for the solar panels and I felt like it would contrast really nicely with the background and what we have going on. So that's what I'm trying to do there. And then as far as light source goes, you know, maybe at the top here, I can make this just a little bit more kind of purple. So now you can see how that's tying in. All right, so now I've got kind of this cool contrast happening here. And because the wheels are light, I want to increase the contrast up front. So I think someone suggested like some strong shadowing and I haven't forgotten your suggestion. I'm going to do that. Let's grab a, shadows are typically cool. So I'm going to grab a cool gray. I'm a, little, I'm a little nervous because I don't want to ruin this thing. So let's start with a neutral gray. And now on top of some of these things, okay, where it makes sense, I'm going to cast a shadow, just a nice strong shadow. And maybe it's on the top of these rocks and then on the other opposite side, like so. So something like this and just blend up. Contrast is your friend. That's my new thing. Don't be afraid of contrast. It's gonna help help your sketches pop. Help things feel right. So we said gray, or sorry, we said uh, like green, purple, and maybe brown. So I could use like a deep brown or like a warm gray for the ground up here. I think I'll use a warm gray because I don't want it super saturated. Topher says blank like no color. When I leave it blank, it's because I'm intending to highlight the area at some point. 
or just I'm thinking in terms of light and shadow. That's what I'm trying to do. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for joining. If this is your first time, hit subscribe and turn on those alerts so you don't miss the next time we're live here. All right, so this is a warm gray and we'll use a little, maybe of the same color again to kind of tie the whole presentation together here. Keeping this side really light because that's where the light source is and we want to create a nice balance and dynamic. I'm also squinting while I draw if you're wondering what that looks like. Something like this, I'm just squinting a little bit and when I do that it allows me to focus on the contrast rather than the details in the sketch. All right, I know I said I was gonna do three things today, but I have ribs on my grill um, outside, doing some smoking, so I'm gonna to have to check on those. I can probably do one more sketch concept here. Let's put some like moss or something on these. Well, maybe not moss, but you know, just some coloration things happening. Again, a little bit of that warm color to tie into Tie into those solar panels a bit. Increase some contrast here where we're shadowed. Welcome to Sketch Day Live. Thanks for hanging out and thanks for all the support. I'm doing good, Tom. How are you doing? How's life? Thanks for joining, Shane. We do this three times a week, sometimes four. I just love drawing. I'm an industrial designer. That's what I do. Design products. But I love, love, love drawing. It's my jam. I like to say I'm not the best artist, but you'd be hard pressed, hard pressed to find a more passionate sketcher. This was fun. Thank you for the suggestion, Lynette. We're going to move on to, I think we're going to do an alien suit mech. And there was some question about form generation and how that happens. So we'll do that. And maybe if we have time, we'll do a spaceship. Maybe. Let's get some more contrast on the inside of this wheel. And just kind of mute this. And the details, okay, I need my neutral gray five. Where are you? And these are really cheap markers, like I said at the beginning of the stream. So if you're just looking to kind of mess around with some markers, I, I would recommend these or something similar. Just keep it cheap. Don't uh, overspend if you don't have to. So hopefully you can kind of see how that works with the contrast. It's like darkest darks against lightest lights. And now you have some more dramatic lighting going on in your sketch. So a pretty effective tool to kind of help things pop. And if I can avoid it, I don't want to use any opaque white, but it's also nice to kind of help things pop. So we'll do that just to clean up on the outside. I do have some white pens that I can use as well. And I think I'm going to do a video on different white pens that I've found and what I like and don't like about them. And um, a white pen's particularly useful in this case where I'm trying to just lighten up the outside of the sketch here so it just pops off the background a little bit more. Or it might be physical separations in things just to add a little, little bit of a highlight where you've perhaps already colored. So I like to start with this pit pastel, or not pit pastel, pit uh, brush pen. It's a water-based ink and it's really subtle and light, translucent. So it's a good in, to, in, in between if you're adding white to your sketch. So here, for example, on the wheel, let me zoom in so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So on the wheel where it's really dark on this side, I want the tread to just pop and maybe some of these elements here. So just adding the white is gonna really 
just help that jump out a little bit. As a reminder, all these sketches will be posted on the Google Drive link. That's in a description for the video. So my plan is to just keep uploading those each time I do a stream. So you do have at least a reference to the real thing that I'm working on. You can kind of see how that works. All right. And then the Molotow pen, which I just discovered, it's super opaque. So if I want like a really nice white spot on this wheel, or it might be the edge of the solar panel, it's, it's basically a real acrylic paint. And if I have a nice light touch, introduce some white spots here. Actually, that one I don't like so much. So yeah, just like that. And perhaps on this top edge, just to help that solar panel pop out a bit more. Let's go ahead, paint that in. I'm actually standing up and drawing now. Sometimes it's, it's really helpful. This is actually the ideal drawing position. You wanna stand up and look at your drawing so things aren't distorted. But I'm kind of used to sitting and I can work through the parallax, parallax that happens just fine. So a little bit of white there. There's something nice about a real sketch that you do with uh, pen and paper. So I tried to, someone asked earlier if, um, you know, this is the type of sketching I do with clients. It's always more exciting than, you know, a very sterile digital sketch. So where possible, yeah, it's good to have, it's good to have that high energy presentation that you get with something like this. All right, it's a pump marker. So I actually have to pump the tip of the marker and some more ink will come out, boom. Now it's recharged and I can add those little highlights where I need them like so. Boom, is my head in the way? My apologies. Do I ever draw from a brown pastel artifact cover board or always white? Um, usually, usually I'm drawing on white paper. Um, I've done I've done sketches on toned paper before. If you guys are interested in a demo on that, I can certainly, you know, do that on the channel. So you let me know. So even here on top of the panel, solar panel. I'm adding just a little bit of white streaks. That's going to help it feel shinier, like so. All right, so that's my super quick, well, not really super quick, but that's my Moon Rover sketch. Thank you so much for the idea. Let's have a quick cleanup here. Once again, if you're just joining, this is Sketch Day Live. Definitely hit that subscribe button. When I say turn on alerts, I mean there's a little bell on YouTube. So when I do go live, you'll get notified. You'll get an email that'll say, hey, Sketch Day is live. Check it out so you won't miss the beginning of the stream. If you're coming from Instagram, thanks so much for hopping over. Because even right now, the Instagram stream would have been completely done and meaning they shut it down. <laughs> at a certain point. I kind of want this shadow to be a bit darker. So I'm going to darken that up under here where this wheel is. All right. So you guys wanted some sort of alien in a mech. Um, and I'll do like form development with that. We're doing Sci-Fi Sunday. Do I remember the movie The Martian? Um, actually, I don't think I've seen the movie The Martian. But I'm feeling like doing something kind of tech organic. So that's kind of what I can do here with the sketch. So we're gonna continue. We're just, I'm just gonna freestyle it, meaning there is no underlay or anything like that. That's what I'm gonna do. Just got a phone call, my apologies. All 
All right. <clears throat> yeah, there's probably more to do this. Maybe an overlay, whatever. Oh, I forgot to sign. Always sign your work. Sign and date. All right, there we go. Now, as far as mechs go, my biggest influences were Mech Warrior, the video game. I don't know if you've seen that game. I used to play a ton as a kid. Played a lot of Doom and Quake. More Quake, actually. Quake 2. But Quake 3 was like my jam. I was part of a clan and I would just play for hours and hours and hours. I'm not doing cars today. I already did a vehicle here. Um, if you want a car, you can check out live stream from Friday and other live streams as well. I do plenty of cars.